And boom, we are live. Wait, are we live? Yes. Uh, over. Uh, and just in case you guys don't know, we're in the presence of a of an Olympian, uh, one hell of an athlete. Well, first off, both Eastside San Jose products. <laughs> let me say, and I was bragging to to coach that you know I went to Pala, toughest <laughs> neighborhood. I went to Lindell Elementary, yep. uh, and then he goes, really, I went to Shepherd, and that's when I said. Okay, you got me there. Probably the only town I could think of of a tougher area. And, and I was reading up last night, and one thing that kind of hit my, my heart was um, kind of talking more about uh, your coach. And I think that's one of the big things we all realize is how, how big of an influence, you know, coaches and those little people have uh, in our lives. And I yeah. heard you say, you know, you get into fights, he dragged you by the ear and, and <laughs> kind of brought you in. And I have, mm -hmm. I have a similar story when I transitioned from wrestling to basketball. And to this day, I keep in touch with him with that fact. And I still don't think he understands what kind of <laughs> – and that's the thing. You can ask everybody in the audience is, you know, name me one teacher that maybe had the biggest impact mm -hmm. in your life. And you'll know yeah. right off yeah. the bat. Yeah. And then I, if I say, tell me about all the other teachers, mm -hmm. name them, mm -hmm. and we'll have no idea. You know? but, so tell, tell me about this, this gentleman. Yeah, coach Ashmore was my middle school coach, and he's a, he's a, he's a awesome – Man, amazing! Uh, I, I got inducted into the Hall of Fame, California Wrestling Hall of Fame. He was one of the presenters and, and was part of the program. So he, he's great. Uh, he did intervene at a very crucial time in my life where I was just going nowhere fast, mm -hmm. and uh, got me plugged into the sport of wrestling. And uh, thanks to him and wonderful teammates and you know, the grace of God, really, uh, I was able to change course. That's what, in my opinion, being a patriot is, is all about, being able to talk about those things. L last two, um, when I explored, um, I, I stopped, sorry, Mom, I stopped selling cannabis years ago, years ago. Uh, and that, that was a, a personal choice, but I also started watching documentaries like Taboo and so forth. And we can do both uh, in one. How important do you feel um, and I will always be pro uh, uh, cannabis, but I agree that it is worse. You think back to the prohibition days; it's worse to make something illegal that it would actually uh, hurt things more versus when you regulate it the way we are now, uh, and it actually produces crime. Kind of will help tax incentives because what happens when we make it illegal? We completely put it back to the black market. Right, and we basically Pablo Escobar, those type of things. If you want to, uh, you know, kill what was the pro prohibitions guy's big name? Not, not a. Uh, but anyways, if you want to, the quickest way to make him not rich is by to make it legal and regulated, and that puts them in turn out of business. I'm thinking about the big alcohol mogul in the 1920s, the most feared guy. I can't remember, but. Um, do you agree with that? That's yeah. yeah I'm saying again, Capone. 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 Yeah. So, about so yeah, you know, you're, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a libertarian at heart, to be quite frank with That's you. Cool, but and I, I hate titles. <laughs> be you. Uh, and I, I, I would classify myself the exact same way. Yeah. Independent libertarian. That's a great way to put it. So I, I, I believe in giving the people to make their choices, including the bad ones. I've heard Ron Paul say that. Yeah. yeah. So if if you, uh, you know. Honestly, even if you want to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, I don't right. think that there isn't. You, you know, shouldn't go to jail if you don't yeah. miss if, out on that. You, should you get shouldn't have to build a you know sixteen billion dollar net, right? To 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 stop people. that one person, right? You know, from killing themselves, they might kill themselves in other ways. Hundred uh, percent. And so, when it comes to drug use, I think you're right. We need to address the problem through uh, through education uh, and through um, you know, what's, commercial. What's crazy is when people find out something is legal, uh, the use goes down dramatically because it's not. It's like for the kids, it's not sexy anymore. Yeah, it's not yeah. sexy anymore. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's like mom saying, "Whatever you do, do not go to the top of that hill." Right? What are you gonna do? You're you're gonna want to go check out the top of that uh, hill. So that's many ways, and obviously these are open-ended topics that have many different views, many different debates. I think. That it's important for all of you to again, you know, objectively talk about these things, and forget about the product. I think, from what I just said, whether it's cannabis or it's uh, prostitution, I also think 
there's a method to, you know, maybe Amsterdam does it for, for tourism, but I try to see both sides and think that, okay, these women are back to the black market. There's, uh, you know, uh, uh, sex slaves. There's no uh, there's people being kidnapped. There's a whole market to that. And uh, I know these are controversial, crazy topics. So I apologize. I think that they're important to talk about where if it's regulated, like let's see, Germany, Amsterdam, you name it, all these European companies that maybe there could put in regulations where, um, you know, they're, they're, you take it away from the black market. Women aren't being abused if they choose to do this in sound minds, and um, they can be healthy and make sure they're getting, you know, tested before you know, the interview process, etc. And and for some people, again, they don't want to talk about these issues because, especially in Asian households, I'll tell you right now, my dad's probably going to back at me when I get home right now. But uh, but these are um, important to talk about because there's a method to their madness, and like you said about. Denmark, we can explore those things. So um, I know the only goal was to talk about um, San Jose, and we, we had those, but I wanted to pick your brain about more of these important topics and, and why I was, you know, so impressed with you because um, it's okay to think differently. It's okay to be curious um, and think outside the box as long as you feel you have enough uh, logic. So I encourage people to don't always be afraid to speak up because you have to go with the norm of what everybody's um, talking about. Right? Yeah, well, I, I I often get criticized. You know, recently we had a uh, – I, I was on the losing end of a conversation where we ban coupons for cigarettes. Okay. You know, and I and I thought, you know, all my co- council colleagues wanted to show how against smoking they were mm-hmm. by banning coupons for cigarettes. And, right. And so, you know – you can ban the coupons for cigarettes. You can even ban cigarettes, but you're not really uh, you're not sol- you're solving the problem. As silly as it sounds, how important do you think uh, actually writing them down is? Obviously, you got to put in the work. You got to do the action, right? You know, write them down and dream, dream all yeah. day. Yeah. But what does that mean to you? And then. Well, writing them down is you know make it as tangible as possible, uh, but more importantly, you have to uh, internalize them. And so, regardless of where you're at, you know, you'll be able to see it written on paper. You're taking that with you, mm-hmm. so it's got to be here. You know, you gotta, it's got to be and, in the heart and specific as possible. Specific as possible, and, and, and then include a number in there, yeah, whatever. Right? It, it, you know, it could be for me example. It could have been I wanted to win the county championship. I wanted to win the state championship. I wanted to win the national title. So all those were there were progressions, and so they occurred at you know at junctures in my life where um, I achieved the, so those those goals, checked it off, and then moved on for the next one. But it also told me that I had to point everything I did, my behavior, my habits in that direction to to move towards that goal. And so that meant tremendous sacrifices, and then outworking opponents, and then going to the competitions that were going to test me. For Tell me where I was at, right. what I needed to do, and where. You know, so goals are are, are tremendous. They're, they're important. You know, Yogi Berra once said, "If you if you if you don't have any goals, you'll end up somewhere else." Mm-hmm. You know, you, you know you need to know where you're going, and right. so uh, you you have to have those goals, uh, right. and otherwise you'll end up somewhere it's, else. It's crazy. It's crazy to me how people kind of refuse to write them down. But I think by simply writing them down, what it does is it immediately creates this tunnel vision as opposed to kind of leading aimlessly but you know some things that happen but let me set three random goals i feel like like writing that down not only just writing in existence but i feel like everything else kind of begins to narrow in it's like at the federal level which is the california state legislature and the state assembly got it lower half upper half and then we have 80 representative just of the state assembly or is that well we have to get to that right now so we have we have Talk about the number, we have almost 40 million people in California, and we have 80 reps here in the Assembly and 40 senators. So each Senate district is you know, about a million people. <laughs> and so it's, it's a huge, huge area, both physically in some cases, depending on where you are in the state, certainly in terms of responsibility. Right. Many people. We have in each of our assembly districts approximately 470,000 people each. Got it. And so it's it, it's a huge area. Um, it, it, there are many. Most cities don't have many people. For San Jose, we have over a million. But 
by district alone is almost half of San Jose. Correct. Um, and 46%. San Jose, we have two, yourself, and... Well, there are three more. Wow. Okay. There are three. So in San Jose, I represent about half of San Jose. So we're right now in the capital, in the state office, mm -hmm. uh, in my district office, uh, which is in downtown San Jose, in the state building, uh, pretty close to San Jose State University. I represent so downtown all the way to East San Jose, down to the Southeast San Jose, Silver Creek, Evergreen area, to South San Jose, where I am, the Edenville area, uh, a little west of that, to Vista Park area by 87. Eastern and Southern Eastern. Yeah, Southeast and South, South San Jose, down to where I am, which is um, near Monterey Highway, Branham Lane area down there. Uh, we have the new Marshall Plato Park, 87 Freeway, we go right up north, Communication Hill, back up to downtown, mm -hmm. including uh, Deer Dawn train station, and the shark tank and all that and everything east of there. So that's a huge area, and that's 100% in San Jose. Now to the west of me, we have Evan Lowe. So just west of that, all the way as you, you know, go to, to Campbell. It's, it's very important to talk about these things, and what I put was, okay, capitalism is not perfect, um, and I'm sure socialism is not perfect. Uh, what, 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 what is your two cents on that, again, any subject, I try to, any great debater is able to debate the side that he doesn't even personally believe in. I was taught that San Francisco State, one of my favorite classes, and but what it forced me to do is also be empathetic to the other side. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, capitalism is going to have its flaws, but that's the American dream for immigrants. That's what gives them, as long as they know they have a shot and not that, hey, you were born of X family in X thing, China. So you're, no matter how hard you work, you're never going to climb up. Um, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, in my opinion. I just wanted to get, you're much wiser, much older than me, your thoughts of, you know, these ideas of, of socialism that... Well, you know, you could you could see how socialism has worked. Mm -hmm. You could look at countries that try it. I wouldn't... I wouldn't categorize Denmark as a socialist country. Mm -hmm. They have some socialists socialistic ideas uh, in, in the way that they care for their population of, of, of homelessness and health care. And I think we could learn a lot from them. However, if you try to buy a sandwich in Denmark, it'll cost you 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you need to, uh, you know, and the, the stores are often empty. I've been to Denmark, and I could tell you that for the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, every action has an equal and opposite. Yeah. Reaction. So yeah. if it costs you, uh, you know, fifteen dollars to buy a beer, you know, mm -hmm. that you're not getting the tourism you, to go a little you, down. You, yeah. Of... You you may not get as much uh, sales as you would hope. Um, on the other hand, I think capitalism could could uh, could run astray as well. But I do believe in the fact that uh, while capitalism uh, isn't a perfect, uh, just like democracy isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. It's the best system uh, that has worked. It's uh, you know it, it, it's a system that works better than all the others. Mm -hmm. and, and and I've 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 gone to China, like I said, I've gone to Denmark, I've gone to to Mexico, I've gone to many uh, parts of the world. Mm -hmm. I've lived in the Middle East. I can tell you that dictatorships don't work either. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell you that uh, illiberal democracies, people who don't listen to one another, um, even if they are democracies, mm -hmm. uh, they don't work uh, mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the, the beauty of living in the United States is that you're, you are entitled to your opinion. Nobody's going to put you in jail for it. Always. You're entitled to work as hard as you want and, as, 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 and you can be as lazy as you want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, your reward will be commensurate to how hard you work and ho or how educated you are. And I think uh, people do lose sight of that. Um, to be in a country where what you put in is exactly what you get out is only only fair, right? Yeah. And if you look at the immigrants that are coming, mm -hmm. if you look at immigrants that are coming right now from India, from China, from Mexico, they're all entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They all came here to work hard. And a lot of times, you know, my kids included, they get a little lazy. You know, <laughs> mom and pop are taking care of them. So you have a lot of people that actually live here that don't appreciate the system I think as much as my parents uh, did. Uh, show me show me a great man who's the son of a great man, right? The area and where the airport is, is Kansas and Chu. And that includes, he has also Santa Clara, and it goes all the way up to Fremont. You know, Pita is Fremont. So I feel very fortunate that of all the San Jose representatives, I'm the only one that's completely in San Jose.
uh, but those other three are what we call part of the San Jose delegation. So for example, recently we were able to get funding, uh, $5.4 million of funding for flood victims. It was the entire delegation, me, along with the other three assembly members, Senator Jim Bell, Senator Bob Wykowski, we combined together to make that budget request uh, for the flood victims. And so we have our own delegation here, even though they represent other cities as well, there's no doubt they're an important part of representing San Jose too. In fact, many of them came from San Jose, right. uh, either City Hall, uh, I served with Kansas Shoe in City Hall in San Jose, uh, many served on school boards or in other capacities that represented San Jose to some extent as well. Wonderful. Yeah. But I put it in a sentence, that was really cool about the Abraham Lincoln Latin quotation that's right there in your guys' chair. It says, the duty of uh, legislatures is to pass laws. Yeah. Right? It's a pretty simple. That was a thesis. We make the laws. That's it. You guys, you guys do that. You guys discuss those. And for those who, who are wondering, essentially that's the difference of when you see AB on a bill versus SB on a bill. Those are bills put forth by Senate bill versus an assembly. That's right. right? SB. Uh, the secret to it, they just didn't want a better life. They've been through hell. Uh, you look at San Francisco, they, they were treated, uh, some of the Chinese were treated uh, the worst when building the railroads at this time. Now they're all the property owners, right, in that way. So I think there is a uh, kind of a correlation to that, right, in yeah, that way. The, and, the American dream is being your own boss. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, and, and determining your future. Right. And I think there's it's still that way. I think it's a little harder to get to because... Uh, right now, I think you not only have to work hard, but you have to be educated, yep. especially in this area. Yep. Uh, and humans, we want to look at capitalism, social, and we want to we want to complain. We want to focus on the negative, and more times it's always more negative, than positive, instead of focusing on what are the positive things about capitalism. And I don't, you know, blame people. I think it really comes back to uh, we're used to being chased by the saber-toothed tiger. We're naturally in. No, I, and I'm serious about that. I thought this was brilliant that we're constantly, what's wrong? What's going on? This, that. We're constantly in this, you know, genetically we're in the survival mode and we got to keep moving. So we tend to always have a negative bias on everything. I think that's essentially where this question came from and people are on social media. It's so interesting to me. When I post something ridiculously positive, no one cares. But as soon as you post something that's controversial or negative, or probably not a good thing, you get all these dopamine likes and refreshes and people are talking, engaging. And what that does and why I fear for our youth is they're like, well, I need to keep doing that. I need to keep doing that. I need to post pictures with less clothes on all the, the wrong things because that's our social environment. Yeah. That's our social uh, yeah. world. That's, you know, you've seen all these champion wrestlers. What is it that is that drive, that spark? Everyone says that, you know, it's a struggle failures, the background, that's what makes people, but they are, we see that common trait, and that's another question I listed, but um, obviously a very tough question, what do you feel that, you know, what if you haven't had a tragedy in your life, what if you have a golden spoon in your mouth and have everything it is, um, is it wrong to say that that person can still have that incredible hunger and drive, they can, where do you of feel course. that it? comes from because you hear it all how bad do you I, want I, all these motivational speeches it, it, it's is it has it hadn't been this for almost thir over 30 years is uh, it genetic disposition is it <laughs> 35 years i've i've encountered a range of of people in the sport of wrestling and it's probably the same in a lot of other sports where they, they come from a, a, an array of backgrounds that are, that are just very diverse income wise uh, ethnicity race I agree. I agree. different countries i've yeah. traveled the world uh i i've, I've seen wrestlers with, with that came from backgrounds with dirt floors and mm -hmm. and, and Joel Romero, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joel Romero is a great example. I mean, and people from Cuba. I mean, you go to Cuba and there's a, you know, they, they, these guys are smuggling cigar, cigars to sell to you so they could you know put food on a table back home. You know, during competitions when they left the country, a lot of them would defect. Right. So they came from very tough circumstances, but they were great wrestlers. Right. And then you have some some uh, wrestlers that came from privilege and they didn't. Well, that's, that's awesome. So, I mean, it's really what you put in. You mm -hmm. get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, is it environment? But you just debunked that. Those are two completely different environments. So, it's not that it's literally. Well, it's important to be in the right training environment. Yes. You know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. With regards to home or whatever. I want to throw a curveball about one thing I discussed with you before, if it's not, not off tangent, but let's say you have any person, any person who's concerned about anything going on um, at the state level, anything that needs to be changed. 
what most of them will do is they'll just complain about it on Facebook. But if they wanted to, to show real change, real peaceful change, what will be some suggestions? I know it's a tough question depending on the subject matter. Uh, what 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 they, could they do? Start a petition, start sure. something, contact their local decision yeah, they makers. They contact us. I mean, there are different jurisdictions. It's yes. a city issue, they contact the city, it's a county issue, and, right. and so on. But right. anytime anyone contacts our office, we will kind of triage it. We'll figure out exactly what jurisdiction it is mm -hmm. and we'll we'll connect them with that office. Wonderful. And so if you're in the city of San Jose, if it's a city issue, find out who your council member is. The, you know, council members are so accessible. They're everywhere. They're community events. Absolutely. Go to a community event, meet them, so that when an issue comes up, you at least feel like you have a connection with that office. You know, your right. state assembly member, same thing. Uh, down to the local school boards and right. county supervisors. Yep. And so uh, we're here to serve. Uh, that doesn't mean we can always get the answer that everybody wants, but mm -hmm. our job is at least get an answer right. to questions that people have. Or you can and educate you yourself about the process exactly. that you didn't know existed. Exactly. Or right. if you have a policy suggestion or if there's something that you think that doesn't work well, well, you let us know, and, yep. and, and that helps to inform us mm -hmm. as your elected leaders. Yep. We get informed by that, and that goes into our calculation. We're looking at different policies and rules or proposals that are put before us. Right. We'll have the experience based upon our residents and what they, the feedback they've given us. And that was really my, my goal today. Is we, we all, you know, we all may not vote, we may, may not care, and say, "Why should we care? This is not going to affect me." Until it affects one of them personally yeah. or their loved one, and. Um, I think everybody, as I got older and wiser, that we should all get involved in you know all these little decisions that um, Osh is doing, which we're grateful for and thankful for. He knows it's so certain that these affect everyone, and I think that's a very beautiful thing. And for those of you who are watching, we'll try to share this uh, this live feed later, and I'll upload it uh, to YouTube. Uh, reach out, even if uh, Osh is not here, we'd love to, to get in touch with you or reach out to somebody uh, and, and kind of point you in the right direction. Uh, so you got to feed your muscles as well.